What are dreams? What do dreams mean to you? Does everyone have dreams? Is everyone entitled to dreams? And what happens when dreams are deferred? What does that do to a person who's dreamed all their life? In this video, I want to talk about Molly Grew, one of the most important characters in The Last Unicorn. Specifically, I want to showcase one of the greatest scenes in animation when Molly Grew finally meets up with The Last Unicorn. Let's discuss. <laughs> So you have to understand, um, as a kid, I loved uh, Rankin and Bass films. I grew up with Rankin and Bass films, their Christmas specials, Thundercats, the like. Um, and in some ways, and I've said this many times before on the channel that, you know, shows like Thundercats were kind of my jumping off point into animation. But there was never one such movie that has stayed with me so long. It's almost burned into my mind, into my soul, like The Last Unicorn. Now you're saying like, what does this dude like in The Last Unicorn? What's going on? What is that about? I, there's people that like sci-fi. They, that's all, anything sci-fi related, that's what they grew up. I'm more of the earthly fiction. You know, the Lord of the Rings, you know, knights, dragons, King Arthur. That's my shit. That's what get, sets my soul aflame. Uh, that's my cat beef. Um, and The Last Unicorn, the animation, um, has been one of my favorite animations of all time. Voice acting... Yeah, it, it can be questionable. You know, Mia Farrow, she she has a nice voice and and the way she delivers her lines. And, you know, I love Christopher Lee, you know, the legendary Christopher Lee as uh, Prince, uh, King Haggard. But specifically, The Last Unicorn is so great because of the animation done by Topcraft. Topcraft is a legendary studio. Um, They gave birth to... A little known studio you may have heard of, Studio Gilby. Um, and they've done all shoots uh with their Pacific Animation Division for Thundercats, Quicksilver, so many Silver Hawks, that sort of thing. But I'm getting distracted. Before I show the scene, let me kind of lead up into what is the last unicorn and why should you care? Um, The Last Unicorn is a story written by Peter S. Beagle. Adapted from his 1968 book of the same name, The Last Unicorn. And it depicts this tale of a unicorn who's grown up all her life in a forest, protecting the forest. As long as that unicorn has been in the forest, all the trees remain green, no leaves ever fall, everything is blooming and thriving, all the animals are protected, there's no hunting within that forest. But the unicorn asks herself, she doesn't believe that she's the last unicorn. She hasn't seen anyone like her in so long. And she starts to doubt whether she is the last. And she hears a rumor that she is the last, but there's a reason for that. That, you know, King Hagger, who's this corrupt, evil king from a distant land, out of spite for the tragedies in his life and just the things that he could acquire, he took all the unicorns um, using a magic red bull who herded them all the way out to the sea and entrenched them and captured them within the sea. So forever and ever, they're going to be locked into the sea until the red bull is destroyed and King Haggard's castle falls. It's a magical pact that the two have made and it's worked out quite well. But this is the reason why the last unicorn is the last unicorn. So she hears a rumor about this from a, <clears throat> a crazy butterfly. Uh, the butterfly is not, he's, well, he is kind of crazy. He, the thing about butterflies, they pick up 
on you know songs and stories and they can only recite and regurgitate those songs and stories and they have a moment of lucid thought you know where they can you know express their own thoughts and stuff like that so in the course of her trying to hear, hear this rumor about her her, her her kin unicorn is just spurting off like songs and they're, they're only pieces of song or pieces of poems or you know jingles or commercials and stuff like that it, it, and and in dispersed between those uh the butterfly does give some factual evidence of the king king haggard capturing the unicorns and whatnot and this pushes on the unicorn to lead not only leave her forest but go in search of her kin along the way he meets up with men who mistake her for a white mare which she's pissed off she's not a white mare and she runs into um, while she's sleeping, she's captured by a evil witch called Mommy Fortuna, who captures animals and uses her spells to make them into legendary beings. So it's very uh, mirages, you know, illusions of mythical creatures. And along the way, she has her henchman and a wizard named Schmendrick. And Schmendrick, he's, he's a very memorable character, uh, voiced by Alan Arkin, the great Alan Arkin. Um, Schmendrick is a sorcerer who doesn't really kind of believe in himself. He's kind of resigned himself into being a cheap magician. He believes he, he knows in his heart that he is a sorcerer, but his talent has never proven that he's more than what he is, but he makes the attempt that he can see that what Mommy Fortuna has captured is not a white mare, is that actually a unicorn. He can see that. He he can see that she is legendary. And he wants to free her. And so he spends all his time trying to figure out a way to break her free of her jail cell. He turn he tries to turn the bars into cheese and unfortunately makes the bars of her jail cell hot. So that, that fails. That he tries to, you know, make the jail disappear and it kind of shrinks on itself. Um and the unicorn believes in him. She believes that there is true magic within Schmendrick. He just has to believe in himself. He has, he has to suss it out on his own and pull it out. And he finally resigns himself. You know, uh, you're going to have to uh, just settle, uh, settle on a second rate pickpocket. And he breaks the unicorn free. But along capturing the unicorn, uh, Mommy Fortuna also captured another mythical creature. Uh, the harpy Seleno and the unicorn and Seleno recognize each other, each other's magic. And like the unicorn says, we're, we're two sides of the same coin. You know, she, I'm the magic of light. She's the magic of dark, you know, good, evil, whatever. And Seleno, as soon as she breaks free, she's going to kill mommy Fortuna and mommy Fortuna already knows this. She says, it doesn't matter what you do. Once you break free, it doesn't matter if you kill me, you will always remember that I'm the one that caught you. And Mommy Fortuna is voiced by the, the, the legendary, excellent Angela Lansbury. Um, so it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you think. I, I already know that I'm dead. You know, my magic is the harpy's magic is so powerful that day by day it's siphoning magic from Mommy Fortuna. And it's making her weaker. And every day Mommy Fortuna is trying her best to hold the harpy in her jail cell, but she's, she's getting weaker and she knows this. She, she doesn't give a fuck. Right? Um, so long story short, Schmendrick breaks the unicorn out. The unicorn breaks all the other creatures. You know, there's one creature that, um, is supposed to be the, the Midgar serpent, but it's actually just a snake. There's one that's supposed to be, I believe a, uh, a legendary griffin or something um and it's just a, a old tabby lion there's other creatures there but um she breaks them all free and then she goes to the harpy and the mommy fortuitous hendrick uh, henchman i forgot his name i'll put his name in the video uh she he goes to it and he says no no don't don't, don't free her don't he'll, she'll kill us all the harpy will kill us all and unicorn frees her I, I can't let her i can't let her stay in this cage as another mythical being i have to set her free and so she sets her free the harpy busts out of the the cage breaks it out and as soon as she starts flying towards the unicorn the unicorn fights her off 
And so the harpy targets Marmy Fortuna. And Marmy Fortuna opens her arms like, come at me. <laughs> and the harpy just goes at her. And it's a very, it's a graphic scene without being a graphic scene. I remember when I was younger, I was like, ooh, what's going on there? And I remember like they were showing like red, purple flashing lights of when the harpy was just chomping down on Marmy Fortuna. They didn't show it, so to speak. You just saw the harpy kind of hovering over Marmy Fortuna. And and you saw her henchman also dead and has been mauled, but you don't see any blood or anything like that. But you see the horror on Schmenjig and you see the horror on the unicorn. Well, you don't really see the horror on unicorn because her emotions don't really show. But she tells Schmenjig, then never run, never run, run away from anything immortal. You know, it, it, it gets their attention. So the two leave off and they travel onto their road. And they run into uh, a band of rogues and outlaws. And this is Captain Cully and his merry band. band. Um, they're kind of like a great value <laughs> Robin Hood. So they're basically living off the land. They're, they're flat broke. In the book, they're paying off the mayor of some town to be hidden in their forest. And the mayor really doesn't give a fuck about him. Like, he's like, I mean, as long as, y'all pay, as long as you pay me, I'll keep your secret, you know. But that's how pathetic they are. They, 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 they are outlaws who are, by the grace of the mayor, are, are, are being kept alive, kept secluded because they're being hunted. And along this band, they have a caretaker who cares for the entire band named Molly Grew. And over the course of the animation, when uh, Schmendrick meets up with uh, the group, he hides the unicorn um, so they don't, you know, try to capture her, try to eat, eat her. Um, and he approaches the band like, hey, you know, how, how's it going? And uh, the band's like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And Molly Grew's the first person to say, nope, nope, slit his throat. He's, he's no good. I don't care who he is. Get rid of him. And you're like, why, why are you going to kill Schmendrick? Like, he's, he's just a magician. but this group is like they said they're outlaws they're fugitives so they're very wary on any newcomers they don't know if those newcomers are bounty hunters you know trying to you know capture them capture reward so molly grew is the first to pounce and declare that this person should be dispatched you know she cares tremendously for her band um she's actually the cook she's cooking them this stew of uh uh rat soup <laughs> It's basically watered down rat soup. They've been using the same rat for God knows how long, and they've had to water it down to stretch the soup, um, which is uh, disgusting. Is I'm not sure if it actually happened in you know during, during those times, but it's funny and it's disgusting. But um, anyway, um, she's doing her best to you know support her group, and she mentioned, "Listen, listen, listen. Um, I'll I'll do some magic. I'll help you guys. I'll I'll, I'll entertain. I'll sing for my supper, so to speak." And so he conjures up. And this is kind of insinuated with the help of the unicorn in the background. He conjures up a mirage of uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marian and their band. And the group see this and they're like shocked. They're like, whoa. And Molly, she's shocked. She's like, oh my God. And so the band, Robin Hood and his merry band, kind of materialize and they walk through the camp and they all look real. It, look, it looks entirely real, but they're, they're mirages. So the band, some of the bandmates, are so like enraptured by this sight that they chase the mirage into the forest along with Molly. Molly, she runs towards them. And so Captain Cully and Jack Jingley, who's this like sidekick, who's this big burly like sidekick of Captain Cully, they say, you know what? You're you're not a good magician. You know, we're gonna we're gonna tie you up. We're gonna leave you here to rot. And so they tie him to this like tree. And the tree comes alive. And it's one of the most kind of like disturbing, almost like funny moments in the in the story where the tree comes to life. And this is big, you know, wide body tree where like <laughs> the tree has like a huge wooden chest that's like crushing Schmendrick in between. Like it's it's really weird for like a child's a children's animation. But the tree is like in love with Schmendrick. And Schmidt was like, what the hell's going on? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, and the tree's like, I love you. I love you. Love you. I'll be the only person that remembers you. I'll be the only person that keeps you safe. You'll, you'll die here and you'll, you'll grow around me. 
and and all this stuff. I'll keep the color of your eyes, and so to speak. It's, it's like spouts all this weird stuff. And Schmidt's like, no, help me out. I'm, <laughs> I'm engaged to a Douglas fur. Uh, he makes that little joke in the animation. Um, and he's screaming, help, help, help. And then Unicorn comes out. And the tree, like, gets, like, really, really angry. And starts manifesting, like, a storm. Um, so the tree is magical in its own way. And, unfortunately, the Unicorn's, like, not having it. And just touches the, the tree with its horn, I believe. Free Schmendrick from the ropes. And the tree reverts back to, you know, a natural tree, which is, it was cool seeing it, but it was like disturbing like how everything was happening and stuff like that as a child. When I look at it now, it's just, it's funny and a little bit disturbing, but yeah. Um, but anyway, the, the pair, uh, once magic is free, they hop off and they continue on their journey. And this is where I want to show the scene. If I can't show the scene, I'll talk through it. But, um, Essentially, Molly grew, realizing that the Robin Hood Mirage was just that, a Robin Hood Mirage. Um, she comes back, and while the pair are walking through the forest, while Unicorn and Schmendrick are walking through the forest, Molly Crew happens upon him, and this scene starts. Talk to her that way. I'm here now. <laughs> oh, and where were you 20 years ago? 10 years ago? Where were you when I was new? When I was one of those innocent young maidens you always come to? How dare you? How dare you come to me now when I am this? <laughs> <laughs> Can you really see her? Do you really know what she is? If you had been waiting to see a unicorn as long as I have... She's the last unicorn in the world. It would be the last unicorn in the world that came to Molly Crew. It's all right. I forgive you. Well... It's time for us to go now. I'm ready. You can't come with us. We're on a quest. Can't I? Ask her. Never! I, Schmendrick the Magician, forbid it! And be wary of rousing a wizard's wrath! Rousing a wizard's... Ra be wary of making a, a magician angry! If I chose, I could turn you into a frog! <laughs> I should laugh myself sick. Oh, have sense, man. What were you going to do with the last unicorn in the world? Keep her in a cage? Oh, you don't even know where we're going. Do you think it matters to me? We are journeying to King Hagrid's country to find the Red Bull. Well, you're going the wrong way. Um, I want to talk about the scene and in my own thoughts and explain why it's a great scene. Um, Molly grew... First off, Tammy Grimes voiced Molly Grew, and she did a terrific performance. Um, the soul in her voice, the hurt, the pain, could only be done by someone who, I wouldn't say has experienced hoping to see a unicorn, but someone who has dreamed of something for so long. And the emotions on display, and then having those dreams those emotions just stamped out, you know? And Molly Grew is somebody who once was, like all of us, very young, who believed in good and fairy tales and magic and all this stuff. And she's a very emotional person. We're all we're emotional beings as humans. We're emotional beings. Some people say they're not emotional, but we are, in some degrees, all emotional. And Molly Grew is someone who has young as a young person cherished let's look at again cherished their dreams held on to their dreams so tight um cared about so many things about so many people and then i'm not sure if the story 
the literary story goes into this as much. Have those things taken away. Have not only those dreams of those people taken away. And what does that do to a person? When somebody who's cared so much about the things that one cares for. I wanted to see a unicorn for so long. I wanted to be beautiful for so long. I wanted to be young for so long. Whatever dreams Molly had, whatever dreams she thought of, and then have those things just taken away. And then having herself having to join a band of outlaws who in themselves, their job is to uphold this ideal of we're taking away from people who have way too much. Their dreams have already been fulfilled. They have anything they could possibly want. And we're giving it back to people who don't have anything, you know, who barely have anything. And we're taking away, and we're, 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 it's a dream of itself. It's, we're, we're a dream group. We're a dream gang, you know? And the reality of that dream gang is that we are living foul. We probably had to do some things that are foul. We probably had to subsist, you know, eating rat soup. You know, Molly, when we see her in the story, she, she doesn't have any shoes. Sure, her clothes are in tatters. Her hair is a mess, you know, but she's still so loyal. Even in the state, she's still so loyal. She's still so caring. She's fiercely caring that it made her caring and love colder and more vicious. You know, it made her isolate the, to the only people that she cares about in her vicinity and everyone else is an enemy because she doesn't want anyone outside to take away from her. She doesn't want anyone to take away the things that she loves, the things she cares for, because she doesn't have a lot to love. She doesn't have a lot to care for. And so when she meets the unicorn, and when I was a kid and when I was looking at it, I kind of thought this way too. I was like, why is she yelling at the unicorn? What did it, what the hell did the unicorn do? Um, but as you get older and you revisit this, it, it, it hits different. in the fact that I did everything I was supposed to do. I prayed for you. I wished for you. I hoped for you. I, I waited for you and you come to me now. <laughs> You come to me right now where I have nothing, where I am nothing, where I've done so many things, where I'm so dirty inside and out. And I'm not saying like, well, I am. I'm saying that she is filthy, but she feels her soul is dirty. She feels that her heart is twisted and dirty. She feels that she's not worthy to see something like this now because she's not in the best state right now. And the unicorn really doesn't say anything other than like, I'm here now. Like I'm, you wait for me and I'm here now. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you now. And that's, that it's very powerful because these things where you hope for and you wish for, you know, we're all here on, we, on YouTube, you know, some of us are living our dreams. Some of us, have worked hard for our dreams and, and you're seeing those dreams from certain, certain content creators. And there's others that are still working for that. There's others that are still hoping to capture a dream or two. Um, and no matter where you are on the journey, you know, some of us, I wouldn't say had to do some foul things to ensure that our dreams come true. I, I, I wouldn't want to assume anything, but, as you as you get older, you have to for some, not I'm not speaking for everybody, but for some, you have to put your dreams on the shelf to pay your bills, to fit in, to live, so to speak. Um and when you continue for some of us. I'm speaking for some of us, when you continue to put your dreams on hold, either for someone else or for a job or for, you know, just to earn a living or keep your house, a car, whatever, 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 whatever you do 
to rationalize why you withhold your dreams. You destroy a part of yourself inside. And this is what's happened to Molly. I've she's constantly destroyed bits and pieces of herself so much that there's only an ember and a and, and bone that remains of what she used to be. And the great thing about the last unicorn is that once she sees the unicorn, it almost transports her back into how she was when she was younger. She starts crying. She holds the unicorn and says, I forgive you. Um, she even tells, you know, Schmendrick, hey, um, you're going the wrong damn way, dude. <laughs> like, you don't even know where you're going. You guys would have gone. You would have followed this man to the wrong way, you know, to save your kin. You know, there's a reason why we met. There's, I, I have a purpose now. I have a new purpose now. I have a, my dream has been realized. You know, and it doesn't matter what happens. She even says, like, I don't care where you guys are going. I, I don't I don't give a fuck where you guys are going. As long as I'm with the unicorn, I don't care. <laughs> and that is very beautiful because she becomes a hero. She becomes integral to the story. She. I, I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but she when things happen to the unicorn, she's the one that reminds her, listen, remember who you are. I know you want this thing. But you only want this thing because you're this iteration now. And I know who you are. I know what you can be. Remember your mission. Remember why you're here. Snap out of it. She's the one that keeps the unicorn on, on point. And it's the reason why now I love Molly Groove. Back then, I really didn't like her. You know, I judged her off the bat. You know, her, she just looks horrible. She's just loud. She just, she's always up in everybody's business. I, I don't like her. I like Schmendrick. I like Prince Lear. You know, I even like the Red Bull. <laughs> you know, these things, you know, caught my eye as a young kid. But as I got older and as I experienced a little bit of life, um, Molly resonated with me as a character, as someone who I identify with. You know, it, it, it sometimes hurts so much to dream once you've been through so many setbacks. And to finally get a dream, you almost like, it's almost like, you hate it because you can't be real. You 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 can't be. You can't come to me now. I, I don't. I'm not the same person that I was. Now I I I am I am older. I am blah blah blah. This and having that dream become realized. It 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 makes you it makes you afraid that there is hope that there is redemption, that there is a possibility that life is not over. Like your dreams are not over. Like hope springs eternal. There is a possibility where I could still live out my dreams. It's not, it's not too late. Is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's, that's all I got. That's why I love the last unicorn. Um, just to prove it, I, I have, you know, <laughs> the original DVD. I even have, um, the autograph book, uh, graphic novella from Peter Beagle. I actually met him when I went to Otakon and he signed my book. I don't know if you can see it. See, that's me. Um, and this book is beautiful. Like the art in it is really beautiful. It's a little blend of what top craft, um, their animation studio did and you know what this artist did, but you know, it, it, if you've seen the animation, you'll, you'll feel right at home with this book. Um, but yeah, I, I love The Last Unicorn, IDW, if, you, if you're interested, IDW. I'll try to post a link in the description. But yeah, I, I love this animation. I love this story. Um, it'll always be a story that I'll always remember, that'll always be close to my heart. And, you know, characters like the unicorn characters, especially like Molly Grew, who is a dreamer and she never there was a time where she did give up her own dreams but she did it out of survival and meeting this unicorn not only revived that fire within her it made her into a hero it made her push herself even further to help her dream be fully realized be remain on mission remain on point find your kin 
and that's that's incredibly powerful so yeah if you like what i had to say feel free to like share subscribe leave a comment um i always appreciate it we're trying a new, new look here at yikes reviews i hope you like it uh, it's time for me to like, kind of tidy up and, and clean up so um hope you guys like it and stick with the next one i'll, I'll probably drop something next week something something all right see you later cabs out Bye.